Welcome back. As President Biden faces growing calls to bow out of the presidential race over his mental acuity, visitor logs at the White House reportedly show a Parkinson specialist visited the White House eight times since last year. Biden's personal physician released a letter overnight claiming that the president has only been visited by a neurologist at his annual physicals and says that there were no findings of any disorder to report. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is demanding that the White House physician testify before the Oversight Committee on Biden's mental state. Comer sent a letter to Dr. Kevin O'Connor questioning whether his medical assessments have been improperly influenced by his business ties to the Biden family and to AmeriCorps. Joining me now is South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mays. She is a member of the House Oversight, Armed Services and Veterans Affairs Committees. Congresswoman, thanks very much for being here. This is very disturbing. First of Good all, morning. what is the link to AmeriCorps? What is the Oversight Committee saying in terms of Biden's physician? Well, we, we showed last year and in the last couple of months that there was a check given from James Biden to Joe Biden vis-a-vis -vis this company called AmeriCorps. And apparently, allegedly, Biden's own physician was involved somehow in the process. So that's question number one. And then question number two is, I don't want to hear from Dr. Jill or Dr. Corrine Jean-Pierre about Biden's mental acuity or his health. Uh, I'm not buying it. The American people aren't buying it. We have a lot of questions. And I'll tell you, my mother is a, a Parkinson's patient. I know it can be a very debilitating illness, and it varies differently for every person. But why is a Parkinson's specialist visiting Joe Biden? In some cases, we saw eight times in eight months in some of the White House records. So we have a lot of questions. And it's not just about, is he sick? Clearly, this is a diminished individual. But as you mentioned, Maria, earlier on the program, it's about the cover-up. It's about the cover-up by Joe Biden, his family, the administration, with their friends in the mainstream media to lie to the American people. Well, this is an incredible cover-up. We've been covering mm -hmm. this now for three years. All of a sudden, the media and these leading Democrats get religion after seeing him at the debate. Why right. have they been covering it up so long? The Wall Street Journal this morning, the top story is about how insiders have been shielding him from the press, shielding him from everybody, because they were covering it up. Right. I think this will go down as one of the, the biggest cover-ups in American history with any president. Uh, this conspiracy to hide this from the American people, to hide the real Joe Biden from the American people. And they saw it for 90 minutes on the debate stage. He couldn't stand there, couldn't put words together to make a sentence. You needed an interpreter to understand what he was saying. And even more importantly is that this is a national security issue. I want to know who's in charge, who's calling the shots, who's behind the curtain pulling the strings for Joe Biden, because we know it's not Joe Biden himself. He cannot be making major decisions for the United States or our allies. So what's really going on here? And the biggest thing I want to impress upon voters in November, because this is no longer a fight for the right or the left. This is a fight for independent and middle-of-the-road voters, is that you have been lied to for over a year now by the media, by this administration, by this president. They cannot be trusted, whether Joe Biden stays on the ticket or they boot him off. Uh, you can't trust the left uh, at all in any of this. They've well, lied look, to you. Congressman, I understand what you're saying, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you are watching the administration have policies that perhaps open up the door for, you know, more shenanigans in the 2024 election. The administration right. now says it strongly opposes the SAVE Act. You and Mike Johnson and others have been pushing the SAVE Act, which would require proof of citizenship to vote in federal elections. But the White House says it's already illegal for non-citizens to vote. So what are you doing? The alleged justification, they claim, for this bill is based on easily disproven falsehoods. They, they're not going into what falsehoods they're talking about. But the SAVE Act, as you know, aims to purge non-citizens from our voter rolls and ensure that only American citizens have a say in our election process. A number of Democrats, however, speaking out against this measure. Why? Well, it's very simple. We should only, as American citizens, only want U.S. citizens to vote in U.S. elections. It's very simple. And if you support voter ID, if you support the Constitution, if you support free and fair elections and you want to support a democracy, you should support the SAVE Act. Because what we want to do is ensure that any IDs that are being used to vote in our elections, that they're actually U.S. citizens. That could be a passport, a birth certificate, an ID that was issued with proof of citizenship. It's very simple, because we've all seen the 
over 9 or 10 million people come across illegally at the border. Um, we know that Democrats don't want to ask in the census every 10 years if you're a citizen or not, because our congressional lines are based on population, not based on citizenship. Um, and this is a way, I think, to tip the scales. And in my opinion, Joe Biden might as well put drop boxes at the border if he's not going to support the SAVE Act. Well, I mean, there are flyers at the border saying, don't forget to vote for Joe Biden. I mean, we've reported on those flyers. So what are you going to yep. do about it? You're an elected official. You just won your election. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Talk about this after the election, November 6th, November 7th, November 8th, after Joe Biden and the Democrats won again and took victory out of your hands? Well, we won big. We won by almost 30 points by by working very hard in South Carolina, and I love the job that I do. And it's up to us. It's up to Congress. It's also up to the states, because it's not just Congress that is putting together the say back, but it's up to voters in each of their states, because the states and their constitutions and their legislature manage their elections, whether it's purging voter rolls, every state is different, whether it's utilizing a voter ID. It's really up to American citizens to be active, to have their voices heard. We just saw some changes in South Carolina. Carolina law that has very strong voter ID laws. We need to ensure that those laws are strengthened around the country, and it's up to citizens to be involved with their state legislature and ensuring that U.S. citizens are only voting in U.S. elections. And you're right, taxpayers printed off those flyers, Maria, that were telling illegals how to vote through the NGO. So defunding the NGOs that are getting illegals into our nation would be great. I've had some amendments on that in, in legislation. We've got to do more than just vote. What's after Congress? What are we doing in the states? What are we actually doing to improve uh, election integrity in this country? What are we doing physically, not just talking about it? Yeah, well, who's in charge here? I mean, should we be having governors on this program to talk about what they're doing uh, in this regard? Is it state legislators? We're going to keep a spotlight on this. We're, we're, what, 191 days away from the election. We've got 10 million, million illegals in this country. Who's in charge here of making sure that illegals are not going to vote? Well, governors would be a great start because it is often up to the state legislatures and governors get a say whether they veto, veto uh, election bills or not. They're ultimately, at the end of the day, they have the veto pin. They can will the legislature to strengthen our elections. But you're right. Who's actually in charge? And states have a real big say in uh, who gets to vote in November. It's huge. Okay. Well, uh, we've got the RNC adopting President Trump's agenda now, Congresswoman. The uh, convention is less than a week away. You'll be there? Yes, we'll be there. And I was really proud to see Donald Trump insert IVF into the RNC platform this week as well. We can be pro-life and be pro-woman, and he's the guy for the job. Congresswoman, we'll be watching. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here this morning. Nancy Mace.